When did you first hear about the concept of the race? And given that you have been in this game for a few decades, it'd be fair to say, did it excite you? Oh, look, I've, I've been waiting for something like this to come along just as a racing enthusiast, because I like to see these good horses come together. And the race is just the perfect opportunity for people to showcase their support for the industry. And I'm in total favour of it, and I sort of wish I had a bit of a slot myself, actually. Well, you haven't got a slot, but you've got a horse that's made its way into the field, Stylish Memphis. Let's just wind the clock back a little bit, because your history in the game, I think you've trained over a couple of hundred winners, nearly driven 50. Um, but the breeding side of thing in the last decade is, is almost taken or superseded all of that. It has, yeah. Look, I've been very fortunate to have picked up um, the mother of Stylish Memphis, Memphis Melody. Um, and she produced uh, a you know, beautiful race mare and delightful Memphis. Memphis. And of course, she's gone on to leave Stylish Memphis. So um, that's sort of pretty much been enough to keep me uh, actively involved. And I have a very good relationship with Mark Jones, who's, who's trained all these horses out of the mare for me. Um, so I'm not going to touch something when it's not broken. No, well it's, it's certainly, it's been a great result so okay. far. Um, I know you didn't pay a lot of mother, uh, money for the mother and, and Delightful Memphis has uh, done a magic job on the track, but Stylish Memphis has almost gone beyond that as well. Yeah, look, you know, it used to be a bit of a talking point when the horses were coming through and, and I'd go out and Mark would, you know, he'd, you know, I'd have a drive out there uh, just before we turn the horses out. And both Mark and I felt that with Stylish Memphis, she just had that little bit of X factor uh, over the top of Delightful Memphis. So I really couldn't believe our luck because it, it, you know, it is luck when you can get two super mares out of uh, the, same, the same mother. Yeah. And um, as it's proven, I think Stylish Memphis has shown that little bit more brilliance. The better's delight factor too, eh? Simple. Yep, pretty straightforward. Simple. Let's talk about her record at Menangle and the success you've had there. Group 1 success in the Oaks, your two-time ladyship, or as this year it was the Queen Elizabeth. Um, mm -hmm. Her mile record is sensational, and, and look, she's flown the Kiwi flag and in these COVID times in many ways. Mm. Well, that's just hats off to Mark Jones and Jack Trainer. It's as simple as that. I mean, I I'm, I'm, don't need to get involved there. Um, so yeah, um, that really just speaks volumes for how the horse has been handled. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to um, have the horse handled wherever it's gone um, throughout its racing career um, and expertly, and the results have proven to be what they are today. All right, Barrett Holmes, how did they approach you and what was the process to getting her into the race? Yeah, so again, thanks to Mark and Grant having a bit of a conversation. It's Grant Iron on. Correct, yep. sorry. And, um, and Grant heads up basically a syndicate uh, for that slot and they are delighted to have her as their representative and we're delighted to have them on board. Was one of the key factors for them and I suppose for you in many ways the, the preferential barrier position of one which now could be one or two uh, with another mare in the race um, being spellbound was that the attraction or one of the attractions for them and for you for that matter? I would say for them definitely and for us, I think that that was the difference between us wanting to, to go into the race or not going into the race. Were the negotiations difficult or were they pretty, pretty straightforward? And is it contractual? Is there a contract? So there is a contract um, and I can say that they have been fantastic to deal with. And it's as simple as that. Yeah, well, he's a businessman, Grant. He, he knows his way around a good horse. He's, he's had a couple of himself. And classy Brigade springs to yeah. mind. So I'm picking it wouldn't have been that difficult. No, I, I think he's a racing enthusiast through and through. And that showed to me in our dealings. And um, we both got the industry at heart. And we're just excited to have a crack. 900,000, 2,200 metres round Cambridge, which often is draw dependent. And you're guaranteed one or two. It's got to excite you. Look, I've looked at the whole field and I just, I just don't think you could rule any horse out of that race. It's perfectly balanced. Um, and with the mares having that little advantage, they're going to need every ounce of luck, but they may just get it on the day. I understand that she's trialling on Tuesday, racing on Saturday, and arrives at about the, the 10th or 11th. So it's a, it's a quick mission to get her in there. And Jack Trainer comes with her, which is, 
probably appropriate and, and respectful by both you and Mark of the job he's done over there? Look, you know, I feed off his enthusiasm and he's young, he's like we all were a few years back where we just loved it. And, you know, I don't know that he's getting much sleep because he's just, he's just so into it. And so for me, that's as big a kick out of it as anything. 14th of April, on track at Cambridge. You're making your way there, why wouldn't you? That's right, and there'll be a, there'll be a car load, or two of us, um, flying up and then and getting a car across to, to Cambridge and uh, staying the night regardless. Yeah, well, I know you'll celebrate it in the most appropriate way. All the very best and, and great Thank to you. catch up too. It's, it's always get, uh, good to get an insight from someone who's been so heavily involved in the sport. Thank you, Greg.